So here are some of the benefits you get when you retrofit to Meritor calipers. We use a one-piece housing that has no plastic uh, cover in the back. This reduces sealing requirements by 30% and helps keep water out of the caliper. We have a centrally loaded gear-driven adjuster, which gives you precise running control. And we also have an abuse-resistant adjuster stem that does not need any shear nut to adjust. And finally, we have a visual wear indicator that helps you check to see how much pad life you have without removing the wheel. This reduces inspection times. Before we begin, let's look at the tools that you will need. A 24 and 30 millimeter socket, torque wrenches, a 10 millimeter and 17 millimeter wrench, and when you measure your rotor, a micrometer and dial indicator. We will begin by confirming that the chamber has been properly caged. And next, we will remove the chamber. Remove the adjuster cap. Back off the adjuster to make pad removal easier. Now remove the retainer bar that holds the brake pads in place. The brake pads can now be removed. At this point, it's a good idea to mark the calipers to make sure that a right caliper is replaced with a right and a left caliper is replaced with a left. All air disc brake calipers have a long pin and a short pin. And when you replace a Bendix with a Meritor, you need to make sure that you replace a left with a left and a right with a right. If you're standing looking at the vehicle, a short pin on a left caliper will be on your left side. So in this case, this is a left hand caliper. You need to replace it with a Meritor left hand. What you'll see, this caliper, the short pin is on the right side. This is a right caliper. And on this side, this caliper, the short pin is on the left. It's a left hand caliper. So you would replace this Bendix with this Meritor. Continue with removal of the caliper bolts. Now remove the old caliper. Next, we will inspect the rotor. Replace the rotor if it's less than 39 millimeters thick. Also check for cracks and grooves. Radial runout should not exceed 35 thousandths of an inch. Lateral runout should not exceed 20 thousandths of an inch. I like to set the first bolt in the torque plate before I lift the Meritor caliper into place. Pay close attention to the bolt length. As you can see here, if the bolt is too long, it will touch the rotor and prevent rotation. Make sure you use the same length bolt as the one you removed. Complete install of the caliper following these torque specifications for all bolts and nuts. Refer to our maintenance manual for more information. As you can see, the Meritor pad is wider than the competitor pad. Make sure you use our pads in our brakes. Tuck the tappet boots behind the screw heads. This minimizes the chance of tearing a boot when you install the pads. Install the Meritor brake pads. Replace the retaining bar.
before you reuse your chamber, you want to make sure it's in good condition. So you want to check the sealing interface counter bore on the caliper that you just removed and the seal around the push rod itself. And if there's any contamination, you might want to replace this chamber. The other thing you need to do is measure the push rod and make sure that it's extending by 15 millimeters or 0.59 inches. Remove the shipping tab. Reinstall the chamber before you set running clearance as the piston actuates the lever. Adjust brake until the pads touch the rotor. Then de-adjust one half turn. It's better to go a little more than one half as the brake will self-set the first time the driver pushes the brake pedal. Rotate the rotor by hand to ensure free rotation. Repeat this on the other side. If you're upgrading your calipers, you need to replace in-axle sets. Thank you.